Today we're going to be going over TESEX NSG3060 transient immunity generator. The NSG3060 contains a mainframe with several different modules installed, one for each transient pulse. The system we're going to be working with today consists of the 3060 mainframe, a combination wave module up to 6.6 kV, a ring wave module up to 6.6 kV, and a burst module up to 4.8 kV. And also we have a single phase 16 amp CDN. The first thing I'm going to do is actually power off the mainframe by flipping the switch on the back. It's going to shut down. Next, I'm going to connect the two high voltage air connect cables off the front panel. Now I'm going to insert the EUT connector which you're going to have wired into your EUT. On the back of the instrument I'm going to connect the inner communication cable. Now the airlock connector. the CDN's power cord and finally the EUT's input power cord and I'm going to flip both power switches on now that the NSG3060 has finished booting up the main menu will appear. As you can see here, only the installed modules are actually highlighted. And for this example, we're going to select the combination wave icon. And from here, you could actually manually change your settings. Or you could go into the standards library and pick out one of the predefined standards. For example, let's change the output voltage from 4.4 kV to 6.6. Change the impedance from 2 ohms to 12 ohms. We'll leave the phase sync the same, but we'll change from ANSI coupling to IC coupling. And let's change the test duration from 2 pulses up to 4 pulses. After we're done changing our settings, we're going to hit the play button to start outputting the transients. As soon as the transients test sequence is finished, the button will no longer be green. Now that the combination wave test is finished, I'm going to show you guys how to do a burst test. And to do that, you're going to have to connect the supplied SHV cable from the burst output on the 3060 to the burst input on your CDN. Then you're going to go back to the main menu and select the burst icon. For this example, let's bump up the voltage to 4.4 kV. And have the test duration down to 20 seconds. Now I'm going to hit play. Now we're going to show you guys how to run the NSG3060 from the Win3000 software. The first step I'm going to do is connect the Ethernet cable from the laptop to the back of the mainframe. 
Then I'm going to set the NSG 3060 in remote mode by pressing the remote icon. And finally, I'm going to double click the Win 3000 icon on the computer. Once we've established the connection, we're going to go ahead and click on the RingWave icon on the top. Then we will select the different test levels. So I'm going to change this value from 250 volts to 1000. I can begin outputting now, or I could even click one of the predefined test levels as seen here. Now I'm going to press play. Now that the ring wave test is finished, we're actually going to show you guys how you can verify some waveforms at your lab. And for this example, we're going to do a combination wave at 6600 volts. So I'm going to switch the poles from ring wave to combo wave. I'm going to change the output voltage from 4400 volts to 6600. Now I'm going to disconnect the high voltage air connect cables. And I'm going to install these adapters, which are sold and rented separately. From there, I'm going to connect a high voltage differential probe to each one of the adapters. And this is going to plug into my oscilloscope. After all this is connected, I'm going to go ahead and, and press the play button to output the pulse. As you can see here, the oscilloscope has captured the waveform. And now you can characterize the rise time, the pulse width, and the peak amplitude. For the final demonstration, I'm going to show you guys how you can verify a burst waveform. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the EFT interconnect cable. I'm going to install this EFT verification attenuator. And I'm going to connect it to our oscilloscope. Now I'm going to go into the software and change it from the combination wave to the EFT. I'm going to change the voltage from 200 volts to 4800 volts. And I'm going to press play. As you can see here, the oscilloscope has captured the burst waveform. And you actually can measure parameters such as rise time, pulse width, repetition frequency, burst duration, and burst period.